I have been asked to build and donate an inlaid cutting board to be sold at a silent auction to benefit the football team of the high school that I graduated from. And they left it up to me to decide what the theme of the board would be, so I figured I would put the school mascot and the war cry as an inlay on the cutting board. I decided to make the cutting board out of hard maple, and that's what you're seeing now as I'm planing it down on the CNC machine. And these were way too long for my little joiner. As you can tell, it's got crooked edges on it. And I come up with this little trick to joint down crooked edges using my table saw. I had originally bought this guide from Harbor Freight to use with my skill saw, but it sucks for that, to be quite honest. But it works out beautifully to use as a guide on the table saw, straighten out those crooked edges. If you've ever noticed the, the pattern on an ingrain cutting board, it's usually got squares or rectangles or some type. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm cutting the, the planks down in the slats, and then I'll glue those up yet again, and that way the grain is alternating as a pattern on the face of the board. I don't know if you noticed those two planks that I planed down, but they both differed a little bit in shade and color. So I decided to kind of mix one in with the other, alternating each slat. And after that glue up dried, I run another surfacing pass on the CNC to get it nice and flat again. Now the cutting board will end up being 14 by 20 inches. And I also wanted to make it really thick. So I'm cutting, cross cutting these down three inches. So the board will be just a little under three inches thick once I get it surfaced down.
Now after getting both side surface down, I'll do a profile cut to get it down to its final dimensions of 20 by 14 inches. Now the majority of the operations I'll do when cutting the inlays, I'll set the origin of the bottom left hand corner, but when I do a profile cut like this, I like to do it from the center. And to be able to get three inches deep, I had to use this big behemoth of a bit. It's a half inch end mill and it's almost four inches long. And it doesn't leave the greatest finish on the side, but it's about as good as I can get if I'm wanting to profile cut something really thick like this. Cutting board complete. Now to do the school mascot, I contacted Borden Petrusco. Borden is a graphic designer and he's the guy that does all of Broen Wood's graphics for his inlays. And this guy is really great because he knows what you need to make a vector CNC friendly and cut out for inlay. So it's just a no brainer to contact him. Um, he done a beautiful job on this Viking, and it just made it real easy for, to set up my tool path. Not to mention it saved a ton of time in the end. Now I'll get an email about once a week with folks asking me about my cut settings for my inlays. And I just can't stress enough that my cut settings aren't the end-all be-all settings to get perfect inlays on your machine you really have to figure them out for yourself there's so many variables to consider your machine how accurate it is your bit settings the bit you're using the wood you're using but i will share with you some standards to get you started the pocket and the cutting board will be zero inches start 0.25 flat depth so I have a quarter of an inch deep pocket the inlay will be a quarter of an inch start depth now it's important for you guys to know that the flat depth has nothing to do with the way that that inlay fits into the pocket and as an example I've kind of made some Frankenstein tool paths here to prove my point I created a separate clearing pass and a separate finishing pass from each other. On the clearing pass, it will have a quarter of an inch start and a 0.1 inch flat depth for a total of 0.35 inches deep. On the finishing pass, I used a 0.25 start depth and a 0.01 flat depth. So as you see this come around here, you'll see the tip of the bit is only cutting a quarter of an inch deep and everything you see below that is the 0.1 inches flat depth that I cut on the clearing pass earlier you see it there the flat depth is actually only going to be the excess that sticks up above the pocket of the board once you glue the inlay in and you'll see that here momentarily when I press the inlay into the pocket. If I can ever get it into the pocket. Now, you see that excess, that's the 0.1 inches that I cut on the clearing pass. Everything that I cut in the finishing pass is fit down into the pocket. I hope that all made sense because it's the most difficult thing I've ever had to explain in my life. Mark Lindsay, if you've ever heard of him, if you haven't, go check him out. He has a YouTube channel and he is a veteran guru and he has helped so many people out. With, with different things. He actually had me on a podcast a few weeks ago and I tried to explain this and I just, I couldn't get it out. The, it's in my head, but I can't get it out of my mouth what I'm trying to explain. So I'm hoping this visual helped a lot of you understand what I'm trying to get across.
So now that we understand that your start depth on your inlay cut is the variable that matters, let's talk about some other things. Now, if you're cutting your pocket at a quarter inch deep and you've set your start depth on your inlay at a quarter inch deep and it doesn't fit properly, then there are several things to consider. Is your machine accurate? Your, your travel in your X, Y, and Z. If you ask any one of those axes to move 0.25 inches, is it moving exactly 0.25 inches? For your Z, if you're cutting too deep or too shallow from that, then whatever settings you have is not really going to matter if it's not accurate. Same thing for your X and Y. If you're cutting more or less than what you're asking it to cut, because the inlay is a mirror image, a flipped image from the pocket, then if your machine isn't square, then those two cuts will be skewed from each other and will not fit properly. Another mistake I see a lot of guys making is how they have their bit type set in Vetric. Now, you, you can't get deep inlays, detailed inlays with a V-bit. You're just not going to do it. Anything bigger than about a 30-degree V-bit, you're just going to have to stay with shallow inlays. You're not going to be able to cut a quarter inch deep and cut your inlays a quarter inch deep and they turn out right. So you've got to use the, the angled bits, the narrow bits like you see here, the, the 5 and 10 degree bits. And you have to set those as an engraving bit in Vetric. Even though they're sold as tapered ball nose, you have to, you kind of, it's a hack. You, you got to kind of lie to Vetric a little bit. You got to tell us in an engraving bit. And it's not Vetric's fault. They didn't, didn't design that V-carve toolpath to do what we're asking it to do, so we have to hack it. And setting as an engraving bit is the key to that hack. Okay, so we've talked about the start depth versus flat depth. We've talked about machine accuracy, and we've talked about bit settings. Another important variable is the vectors that you're using for the image that you're going to create your tool paths from to cut the inlay. You can't just cut any image. You can't just download some vectors off the internet and then cut a detailed inlay. They have to be set up properly. And that's one of the biggest reasons why I had Borden draw out this Viking for me. I could have done it, but it would have taken me 10 times longer than he did, and I was kind of pressed for time to get this board done. So hiring someone out like Borden that, that knows how to draw these specifically to make tool pass from is half the battle. So if, you, if that's another variable. If you've had an inlay fail, your machine may be accurate. Your, your bit settings may be accurate. It could be your your graphic image, your vectors, your tool paths is what's called this problem. When I was about halfway completed with this board, Vetric released version 12 of VCarve and Aspire, and they included a VCarve inlay toolpath, and I was really excited. I bought the upgrade and downloaded it, and I was very disappointed to see that it is a VCarve inlay toolpath, but it's very limited. It only allows you to use V-bits. And like I mentioned earlier, you're not going to get deep inlays using a V-bit. So I'm a little disappointed in Vetric if you're listening. Not to mention the upgrade isn't what I would hoped it would be in other aspects either. I just didn't feel like that I got a whole lot for my money. Version 12 isn't a whole lot different from 11.5 other than new carpets and drapes it's basically the same software so i sincerely don't want to deter anyone from upgrading but you may want to save your money on this one if you haven't upgraded yet because in my humble opinion you're not getting a whole lot more than what you've already got 
as far as V carve goes, I don't have a spire, but I would have liked to have seen some enhancements with their vector editing. I think they're awesome already, but that would have been a, a wonderful improvement if they had included some modernization of that. Um, improvements to the rotary tool paths. If you've seen any of my previous videos, I do a lot on the rotary and there could just been some simple things added that would have made the rotary part of that just even better. And I also have the uh, laser module and I don't see any changes in that either. So if I had seen some improvements and enhancements in those areas, it would have made my investment a lot more justified Now that I have all the inlays glued up, I'll run a surfacing pass just a couple of ten thousandths deep to get it nice and flat and clean up any residual glue that still might be on the surface of the board. And then I cut a juice groove using a half inch ball nose and I cut that a quarter of an inch deep. Juice grooves to me are a dual function. They're obviously well juice grooves to keep stuff from leaking out over the edge but they also kind of act as a frame for whatever image I've put on the board. Then once that was done I cut handles in the side of it. This board weighs in at about 25 pounds. It's pretty heavy so if you dropped it on your foot you'd have a bad day. Then I cut bevels on the side just as a little elegant touch to it. Now I see a lot of guys use some of those fancy oils and wax to do their cutting board, but I have found that just good old fashioned mineral oil does just as good a job. I'll apply that to both sides, the top and bottom and let it soak in for a few days and allow it to dry. And then afterwards, I'll just use some regular beeswax to seal it. I was in such a hurry to get this board done, I forgot to put my mark on it before I oiled it. But I was a little worried what the laser would do on the old board, but it actually turned out pretty nice. There you have it, another inlaid cutting board. 
I really truly hope that the things that I touched on help somebody do successful inlays. It's difficult to do, but with a little time and a truckload of patience, you can do it, I promise. As always, thank you so much for watching. Y'all take care.